Question six and question seven are both using the same illustration as well. They're using this illustration, and the directions are asking us to use the diagram to find the angle measure. So let's take a look at question six. It says that angle two is 110 degrees, and we're supposed to find angle four. Well, remember, the angle that's directly across from it, kind of on the other side of the X, really, those are called vertical angles. Those are angles that are across from each other. And as we saw in the instruction today, vertical angles, angles that are across from each other, have the property of congruence, meaning if we know one angle, the other angle has to be exactly the same. So if this is 110 degrees, then this one also must be 110 degrees, which is the answer to question six. You'll use that same piece of knowledge to answer question seven, but let's talk about one and three quickly. Doesn't matter which one, the logic will flow for both sets. Let's say we were talking about one and two, though. All right, and again, we could use the same logic for two and three that I'm about to give you. One and two together, if I cover up this line that protrudes to the left there, those two together, all that would really be left would be a straight line. Well, those two together have to make then 180 degrees because that's how we're going to get a straight line there. So if this is 110 degrees, and that means this chunk has to be 70 degrees because those two together are what's going to give me 180 or my straight line. Remember, these two angles together are specifically referred to as supplementary angles because they add up to 180 degrees. The exact same thing is going to happen with two and three. They make 180 together, so three would also have to be 70 degrees, which makes sense because these two are across from each other just like two and four are, so this would be 70. This would have to be 70 based on that principle as well. Number eight says the diagram shows the intersection of three roadways on a map. Based on the diagram, what should be the measure of angle ECD? So angle ECD starts here, runs to C, and then off to D. So ECD is this entire segment down here. Now, we have a few pieces of information there. First off, we see that this angle they've already marked for us, so we don't have to work for that one. This angle here that we would call BCE or ECB, this little angle off here to the left, this angle here is 30 degrees. Now, this angle right here, well, as you can see, that makes that classic L shape that we talked about earlier. So that has to be 90 degrees. Now, how could we prove that? Well, remember that this here, is a line, a straight line, or a straight angle. So that's got to be 180 degrees by definition. Because of this marker right here that means 90 degrees right angle, right, we'd have to say, how many more degrees do I need over here to get up to that 180? Well, if I already have 90, I need another 90 to get to 180. So that forces this little segment to be 90. So we know how big this chunk is here. right? But what we don't know is how big this chunk is here. We know that this larger chunk over here, because of the right angle mark, is 90 degrees. But we need to know how much this segment is in order to add it to the 90 we already have to come up with our answer. But let's just for a minute cover up this line towards the bottom here. Notice that what I have left then is that classic X shape. And remember, we've already said that when you have those angles that are across from each other in that X shape, those are called vertical angles that we talked about back up here. And those angles are congruent. So if this angle is 30 degrees, that means this little angle over here, even though I don't really need it directly, I need it to help me get to the answer, is 30 degrees. Well, now that I know that important piece of information, I can figure out what this chunk is. Because we can see from that right angle mark that these two together, this angle and this angle, have to make 90 degrees. Well, even though I don't need the 30 for the actual answer, I do need it to help me figure out that this chunk would then be 60 degrees, because 60 and 30 together make my 90 degrees. Now that I have that, I'm going to add these two up to find my answer for angle ECD. 90 and 60 is 150 degrees, so angle ECD must be 150 degrees.